Hello YouTube, Fassman here and it is a lovely, beautiful, rainy, grey, wet day today and it's video day so I think we're going to do something a little bit different so meet me upstairs and I'll show you Hi and just a huge shout out to Killer Robotics, he sponsored this episode um, he recently gave me a donation over coffee in this case, it's actually Coke. And as such, I'm doing this video as a sponsorship to him. If Killer Robotics, if you're listening and you want something a little bit different as well, just drop me a DM or PM on Twitter and I'll do you another video. Thank you so much for your donation. I really, really appreciate it. And as always, all of these donations go towards the channel. I actually took that money, I added some more money, and that, that's what gave me the petrol money to go and fetch the next... Uh, installment the next pickup video because uh, that was actually quite a trip to take but i don't want to spoil things so let's continue the video you're probably seeing something a little bit strange here unless you read the title of the video then you know what's coming but it's it's an overcast day it's nice and raining it's nice and dreary it's kind of put a damper on my other plans but in the next video that i'm going to show you there's this huge amiga themed pickup that I recently got from a, a very close friend of mine. And in that pickup, there's this giant stack. So there's like tons and tons and tons of like Amiga magazines. And when it's this cold outside, what I normally do is I sort of go to my bed, get into bed, grab a bit of Coke, and then uh, page through some magazines and read up a bit. Seeing as the next video is going to be a media theme, I need to like educate myself. I need to go through the process and figure out what what this computer was all about. I never owned one. I only recently, like a few years back, got one that sort of worked, and then I got one that fully worked. And now I've got a what I would call a substantial console collection for Amiga in South Africa. There's not many people that has two working computers and there's a whole bunch of things in that box. I'm not going to spoil it for you, but it's substantial. I've thought what would be interesting. Now, what, what's something that you guys might like that I've never seen any other retro gamers do? And that's, you know, sharing that this experience of looking at a magazine with a friend, you know, and... We're not going to go and physically sit down and read all of the, the things in here. What I'm mostly looking for is pretend like it's 1994, 1995. I'm in CNA. I've got like half an hour to kill and I quickly want to go through some magazines and see what's in there. And normally what I do when I've got that sort of time to kill is I've looked at all of the adverts and little excerpts and the reviews to check out like scores and that sort of thing. And then uh, if, if it's interesting to me or if the article is something that I can use or reuse, it's normally something that I'll go and I'll take home. And I'll, I'll buy it and take it home and, well, rainy day, proceed it slowly. But we're not going to do that today. Else this is going to be like 10 hours worth of content. There's quite a bit of books here. I'm just going to do like five of them and let's see how this video does. If you guys enjoy this sort of thing... I'm going to see if I can get some more of the old computer magazines uh, from the era. I had all of the PC formats from 1998 to 2006, but I gave all of them away. It just, it just took up too much room. It was too big, you know, so it's going to be a question of me hunting down some more magazines and stuff or going through some more Amiga magazines. <laughs> but I just think that this is going to be something that's completely different and something that's quite fun to do. You know, especially on a rainy day. And until you wait for that big pickups video, which is coming next. Okay, guys, let's quickly look into these. And uh, I zoomed you in quite a bit because the text gets quite small and you can't read it properly. So I'm going to have to scroll up and down as I show you things and we can have a look at them. You know, and what we're more or less interested in more. It's going to be things like adverts and that sort of stuff. And here already we've got a nice one. So here it's the warp engine. 
A complete acceleration solution for your Amiga 4000 and 3000. The warp engine provides highest speed 040 acceleration available of up to 128 megabytes okay, of local 040 burst memory. The fastest SCSI 2 hard drive controller available or without using a single Zorro free slot. So your Zorro frees were high speed buses. You really didn't want to use them too much. And let's quickly just take a look at how much these things costed. And we've got the warp engine, the 4040. That's going to be the one that they've got listed here that, that they're touting on top. And that's $1,695. Now, what's interesting is they don't even list the 040. This is for the 3040. <laughs> okay, so the 4053 is also not listed. So I presume these two um, processors were, were difficult to get and the supplier couldn't like put a price down on them. But let's just say we, we wanted the cheapest one. You only want 28 megahertz extra on your system. And of course you wanted it with the CPU. That would have been $1,195 back in the day. That is a huge amount of money in uh, 1994. And that's probably why not many of these accelerators survive. Okay, so we've got first impressions. We've got like a table of contents. Sorry once again guys that you guys are so zoomed in, but if I zoom out anymore, you can't read the text. So we're just going to skip ahead. Like what we're interested in is the, some of the reviews and some of the adverts and stuff. So those are the most interesting things. Still the best uh, graphics money can buy, DC TV. This is an RGB converter, allows the use of a DC TV with standard RGB monitor. Okay, so that's just the RGB converter. So the DC TV, no spoilers in the next pickups, it cost $299. Okay, paint digitized display, beautiful full color composite video images on any Amiga. So it's like an early video capture card. Capture an image in 10 seconds from any video camera or stable video source. So you, you took 10 seconds per frame, so it's not even real time. Oh, full featured paint digitizer, converter of software. Okay, compatible with AGA 1200 and the 4000 Amiga, so the top of the range stuff. Compatible with all 3D rendering graphics pickups, include AD Pro, you know, this is compatible with all of their software. That's awesome. So we also have this Super Gen SX, SVD and Composite Gen Lock. So if you're doing video broadcasting and that sort of stuff, you need a Gen Lock. The Kitchen Sink, what is this? The Kitchen Sink provides two channels of time-based Connection prefers local CPU. Uh, the connections provide a composite AB rolling edit sync system. Okay, so you, you have two video sources and a little slider. And what will happen is this one will fade out and then this one will fade in and then vice versa as you set it up. You know, very early video editing stuff, which is awesome. They also have introducing productivity for video slots. So this is a case, three PCIT, I guess it's an 80 style case for your Amiga. Uh, slot provides a revolutionary mini tower that expands any Amiga 2000, or 3000 or 4000. So this can't even do like the 12,000 uh, tower case conversion. You must use an Amiga 2000, 3000 and 4000. And um, this would have set you back another thousand dollars back in the day. Now what's interesting about these is the only thing that really changed is the backplate that you need to change when you put an Amiga motherboard in and a lot of these, like this case design was like absolutely classic in the early 90s. You know, when we, when our, my father's computer shop, we sold a lot of this sort of style cases for computers, you know, back then. So what do we have here? Yeah reviews so yeah we've, we've got earlier we mentioned the warp engine and the 4000 uh, geforce 040 and let's let's do a review of those two that's probably why the advert is right in front because of course they had the review published and the company was like we need to advertise this 
So they probably paid a premium to have this listed. So let's see what the difference is here. Is high speed acceleration and SCSI to controller. That's awesome. Okay, 68040 accelerator for the Amiga 3000 or 4000. So this doesn't have your controller with it. But this one doesn't come with any RAM. This one comes with RAM. This one isn't compatible with an Amiga 3000. This one is compatible with Amiga 3000. Okay, there is an Amiga 3000 available, yet the minimum doesn't say Amiga 3000. That's weird. Both of these are easy to install. Let's take a look at these beasts. Oh, back in the day, if you had one of these, you know, you had the fastest of the fast. Not to mention, you already had to have a, what, a Amiga 4000 to have one of those. Yeah, so. We'll, this is all just like general review. What I'll do is you guys can pause the video and you guys can read the review, you know, with at least the first page of it. Dimension said of their time. Amiga users are visionaries. We saw the future in Boeing and we followed the mounting ball through many industries, first in desktop 3D graphics, and all the way to prime time television. Oh, that's awesome. Of course, here we've got like a time frame. So before we also had this little time frame, we'd like the bouncing ball on the first Amiga 2000, oh, Amiga 1000, was it one? I can't remember. Uh, Amiga introducing animation starts with all. Now this was actually done with some trickery. <laughs> it wasn't quite what you expected. And then it just goes on through the timeline. I'll, what I'll do for you is the same thing, this is part of that review. You guys can pause the video, catch up on this. On your own board. So this is interesting. This is 1994, and it's all about 3D things. And the Amiga wasn't that great with 3D. Uh, but yeah, I think this is probably the theme of it. Image 3.0. Now, wasn't this the thing that worms the animations? Was like that not? I love that they actually mentioned not copy protected. Look at look at the CG graphics. Yeah, we go. So that just continues the whole video editing in focus. Practical advice for video editing. So it literally goes into how to clean your video heads, clean them up, very careful. <laughs> right. Maintenance for everyone's VTR, so. Let's see, animating images process, you know, what the, was the process like back in the day? It was all based on digitizing. Once you had a digital, then. Yeah. God, but this is what I, I wanted to see and that this is what we want to read creative computer summer sale <laughs> and let's look at all of the stuff so this is all of the interesting stuff let's check and take a look at this monitor here you have a mega 500 or mega 2000 and wish you could have a flicker free workbench maybe run your word up processor page stream or spreadsheet without getting a headache <laughs> Well, if this is the complete ECS chipset, 2.04 ROM, super dense, you can have with this monitor, set up your preferences for productivity mode, better charges, no more flicker, all you need is a video adapter. So you, you need like a video adapter store for this. This is the cheapest flicker fixer ever. <laughs> oh, this is actually, uh, it's not a monitor, it's just a flicker fix fixer. No, it, it's a monitor, 14 inch Philips tube. It is by CTX. CTX made monitors. I had a CTX monitor. Really, really good stuff. 
Okay, dot pitches point two eight eight. Full overscan, no black borders, support all new models. It's a multi mode, most likely. But today, money back guarantee five hundred dollars. And this would have been like a fourteen inch. Oh, it's a fourteen inch here. Yeah, it says fourteen inch. You know, for five hundred dollars, nineteen ninety four. So you could probably double that if if you have a look at the actual cost. Wow. Well, and uh, they mentioned like getting headaches from spreadsheets and stuff. So because uh, CRT is updated in lines, some people were like sensitive to that. So if your refresh rate was too low, you'll start getting headaches and stuff from working on your computer too long. I grew up with a computer, so I never had that. I kind of uh, probably just got used to it or something. And then we've got the Mega CD32. This is one thing I want for my collection. 32-bit power, CD-based games for incredible capacity, $374. So the Mega Drive was cheaper, if I remember correctly, than this back in 1994. PlayStation was coming out slightly more expensive. But, yeah. Then we also have Brilliance, which is Brilliance 2.0. That's some more software uh, for productivity, for frames, that sort of stuff. And then we've got a desktop manager, desktop magic, a bigger screensaver, and system sound manager. So just for like a screensaver and system sound, it's twenty nine dollars. <laughs> Media Vision CDR MV two CD ROM drive. Okay, so is this a CDR twenty five mechanism? But is this a writer, uh, or is this I just a? Uh, this is just a reader. So it's a SCSI based, no carry required, single speed operation, so one X, one times. Oh man, and a power supply, one year warranty. No, one file, oh, $129.95, but that's not too expensive. You know, if you wanted a CD ROM. Uh, title includes, so you've got like a copy of Asm, Goldfish Double, Texture Haven, I don't know what those are. There's new updated drivers, GVP SCSI users, driver software is now compatible, freely available from Asimware. So, back in the day, internet, no, it's 1994, it's not that popular. It wasn't a question of use, could we go and download? So here we've got the slightly more advanced NEC210 uh, external CD-ROM drive. You know, this one. Multi session photo CD, XA compatible, 300 kilobytes a second, CD ROM bonus pack. So, if you get a CD ROM, you will also get that, that software I mentioned earlier. That's kind of cool. Some more uh, non linear editing packages. I don't recognize any of those. Desktop publishing, CAD, Word, no. Final copy too. <laughs> so mice and trackballs, mice R and D Swift X. So this for a mouse was twenty nine dollars. Alpha data optical pen MSE. So it was optical pen, you know, movement. That's fifty eight dollars. And trackball. Oh, you must get a trackball. Oh, that's awesome. Also fifty eight dollars. So there's some CD-ROM titles here at the bottom. Some more titles there. CD-ROM drives on this side. Games. Let's let's look at the games. Come on, we have we have to. James Bond Free, the AGA version. That's there. That's thirty-four dollars. Aimball, Impossible Mission, Total Carnage, Dark Mirror, uh, Second Samurai, the sequel is even better. <laughs> oh, Cannon Fodder, absolute classic, $38. Star Trek 25th uh, Anniversary Edition, 39 Settlers, and Winter Olympics. And then they sort of just blurred out the rest. I wonder if this advert was designed on Omega. Probably not. Oh wow, here we've got some accelerators again. So, 
I want to fit it turbo plus series. Now these you can get like the modern design of that still exists. Uh, I've seen them floating around. It's 40 megahertz, 68030. Ooh, fast things. And that's $464. So the 68030 looks like that's more or less the one that's a bit more budget that people went for. But the 50 megahertz one, now that's a beast. 4 megs of RAM as well on that one. Okay, so yeah, that's the one that, that you needed to go for. Oh, and of course, this has the SCSI kit, you can pay it all with extra kit SCSI. So, chin lock, IO extensions, TCP, DSS 8 Plus, Digital Sound Studio, and for sound mixing and that sort of stuff. Uh, very quiet digital sound sampler, includes digital sound. I'm not going to spoil it the pickups. I think there's one of those. Okay. GeForce, you know, 040, that's what we saw earlier. You know, 999 Capital for Mega 3000. Toaster racks, of course, if you have your toaster rack. Opal, Egg Spectrum. What's a GV? E EGS Spectrum, what's that? Casso Voicemail system, you know, that was quite popular back in the day. Connect your Amiga and have it act like a sponsoring machine. ECS 28 Spectrum, go beyond. Oh, that this is the, the Spectrum. Go beyond AGA graphics. Oh, it's a graphics accelerator with real time 24 bit true graphics enhancements. Programmable resolution of up to 1600 by 1280 wow that's some real ideas 800 by 600 in 24 bit that's amazing includes a graphics cable pass through because you know you have to switch the graphics when it's in use many applications egs paint etc here's an opal visual main board core unit uh, modular visual system a true 24-bit frame buffer. I guess this adds 24-bit video again. Very, very nice. And that's only $399. Oh man. This, this, this is the advert that keeps on giving. So, here's the rest of the game. So, you can get Mortal Kombat. That sticks out to me. Syndicate. That's awesome. Speedball was pretty good. Predator, Back to the Future Part 2, Part 3, Theme Park Mystery, I don't know, that was for Omega. Full Castle, and these are all like a little bit more cheaper, these are like $8, $9. So CD32 didn't have a lot of games, logically, and let's look at the actual price of these, $19. So you're paying a premium to play Total Carnage, or Elite 2, or some games, those. Uh, the color monitor this one is for a 17 inch it costs you 759 dollars <laughs> for 17 inch what's the resolution on this bad boy do they even say uh perfect for writing gs plus a bigger 4000 this is like more like a vga sort of one but the frequency is much lower Hard drives, and now this this people can relate to regarding what system you've got. So, a 3.5 inch, 528 megabytes IDE, but that is very fast. 424 dollars, <laughs> 260 megabyte, 259. 3.5 inch. Uh, of MS, what's this? 475. This is not SCSI, this is a little part of the form stuff. So, a oh, one gigabyte, $2,849. And these one gigabytes, they were like unreliable as can be. And you, you'd pay that, and then you lose like a gigabyte's worth of data. Back then, a gigabyte was a big deal. Okay, micro polish hard drives. I think these are external, those external cases that you get with multiples in, like sort of like a RAID configuration. But yeah, it's 1.7 gig, 100 and 
39 so in order to get it for that price it's going to have to be like three five and 500 megabytes or whatever the case may be sort of thing so yeah quantum quantum doesn't exist anymore as far as i'm aware and they, they also never lasted very fast let's go here one gigabyte in a quantum it's a price it looks like it's 758 that's cheap but I don't think that's correct. Yeah, no, 900. So compare that to your, your Seagate, you know. Quantum was much cheaper. Okay, here's some software for video editing. Let's see if I recognize any of these. Not really. But Alpha Paint for the video toaster was like $600, 559 Wow. Max DOS version 2. Easy Mac Amiga file transfer. This is like Glaplink so that you can transfer to various machines and that sort of stuff. Ah, oh, this advert's still carrying on. You know, I'm not going to bother with a lot of these, but let's go take a look at the flatbed scanners. Scanners, if you're collecting today, they are completely useless. You can get tons of them for like 50 bucks each, each at the charity shops. Take up a large amount of room. You know, not much you can do with them. So, high quality flatbed, 24 bit, it's only 300 dots per inch, but that's very low resolution. $789. <laughs> if you wanted 400 DPI, over a thousand. Just get these in frame. You feel free to pause, guys. Page 32, is this going to be the show map scene render? Okay, so here we've got some benchmark for those uh, accelerators. So we've got the warp, and we want to do it, of course, with 16 nanoseconds. We want to give it the benefit of the doubt. And it looks like for texture maps, it like isn't performing that much difference. You're not going to notice the extra five seconds. Same with a uh, simple render, same with complex render. So it looks like the GVP isn't a bad one to actually get. Unless these are minutes. Yeah, th those are minutes, uh, seconds, minutes. So yeah, in that, that case, you really want the warp 60 nanometers. So you have to fill out the extra. Make sure if you've got a mega 4000, don't work on anything else. But yeah. So frame synchronizers, quite good as well back in the day for video editing. And some more adverts. DBK, I don't know what DBK is. You know, it's a full potential of a 1200 with DBK. You want to oh, it's expandable, it's speed up the maths and into so it's mass go processor. Here's something interesting to you guys. Image manipulation or ray tracing? Wow, 1994, and then they're talking about ray tracing already. You know, the technology has always sort of been there. It's just a thing of we can't do it in real time. You know, that's quite cool. So, if you wanted to add one, two, I want to only add megabytes of memory. It's 299, just for like a property drive. It was 179 dollars. I'm skipping a lot of these because we, we took a lot of time in the previous advert. I mean, wow, well, TV Bank 219 is another accelerator. M1230XA, high speed. <laughs> Not even conventions <laughs> for these accelerators. $399. dollars is that a good accelerator? Did you own one? What was your thoughts on It's the edge. Some more software. Uh, too late to change new lower price call for new titles. You know, this is how quickly the price has dropped. So you, you phone up the publisher and you're like, 
Guys, guys, that, that, that bit you're going to print down, the prices are wrong by now, can you slap something on top of it? Or oh, here's a, the revision for it, quickly publish a revision because we, next week the prices are going to be a lot cheaper. Some more monitors, so for 17 iDeck, I've never heard of that. Multiscan, so it's multi-sync, multi-scan, same thing. $999, 14 inch, $499. But this one has a resolution of 1024x768. So that's fairly high resolution. And look at the, the Hertz input. 15 to 40 megahertz. So that's very low. Your CD is still selling for $399 at this stage. So there's a review of a color scanner. Some more prices now. This this doesn't have like. Well, I guess we can look at the games here. Beneath a Steel Sky, absolute classic, forty one dollars. Dark Mirror, once again, thirty seven. So it's cheaper by the other place. Syndicate, thirty eight. Cheaper by the other other place. Reactivity. Recognize any of those? Hardware is your accelerator cards. So once again, like the sixty eight or thirty accelerators are cheaper. That might have been like the go to, let's just get a 68030. It's not as fast as the 40 you had. You know what? Not everyone had that sort of thing. Bouton tools. What is this? Utility programs for the video toaster. So if you had a video toaster, software hut. So more software sales. Here's a hard drive plug on. Let's. Skip to the one terabytes if they've got. Yeah, one gigabyte, so not one terabyte. $729. That's not bad. My crop. Never heard of my crop brand. Ah, they get some full systems. Ah, but it's it's all like core. So Amiga, if you want to buy Amiga, he oh, has wonderful price. So Amiga 4000. 25 megahertz, 6 megabytes of RAM, $1,899. Oh man. The irony of all of this is the Amiga, if you buy 4000 now, it's kept its value. So you're going to pay more than that for a good example. Dave Weir, this one has pictures. <laughs> Pixel 3D, it's 3D rendering software. Lightwave is still around. Um, in some form or another. Alpha Paint, you, lots of games were designed using Alpha Paint. Let's see the side. AP Tools, Art, Sparks. But mostly this magazine is like covering 3D stuff. But yeah, it is 1994, that makes sense. A powerful morphing system at an affordable price. Okay, yeah, that, that seems we take a photo and a change into another. Only $49 for that. Wow, these guys spent a lot of money. Dev double patch advert. So I think we're just going to be able to do like two magazines or three. Ooh, yeah, here we go. That's interesting. Okay, 400% increase in speed on an Amiga 4000. Okay, 68040, 25 megahertz. So they claim it's four times faster. Macrosystems makes it possible with warp engine. Free two-day delivery, okay. So that, that's the accelerators we saw earlier. So everyone was like stocking these. We've got some hard drives here. Oh, two, two gigabyte? Quantum, $1,299. That's that's very cheap compared to Seagate. Uh, one, two gig. Micropolis, never heard of them. Maxstore, Honor. Yeah, I would say that that was worth getting. Audio. 
NVIDIA, software, software, software. CPUs. Let's have a look at the CPUs. So a 68040, okay, 40 megahertz with the FPU, $399 back in the day. Now these are counterfeited, extremely counterfeited at the moment. You, Most of them don't have the FPU and then what they do is they restock screen it and then they sell it and your megahertz could be like anything. It could be a 25 or 33 or whatever. So yeah, that's, that's interesting. Uh, yeah, and it, of course, if you just want like a crystal oscillator, it's $10. <laughs> even back in the day, you know, if you want a crystal oscillator, you wouldn't go buy it at the computer shop. Uh, but like FPUs, that's floating point modules. But like the cheapest CPU here is like $50 for the 68050 EC20. Man. The amount of money you had to have. Here's a nice advert. Another case, this one is like $900 again. Be ready for video flyer. Micro oven, that's only 395 so that's like a budget. Creation tools. See if there's anything else. It's kind of yeah. So there's like industrial design applications. Or what's this? Or complete scaled homes for microwave extension. So someone was selling these. You can buy like a little scaled home. <laughs> okay. Let's look at the faces on that. Oh my oh. And we're just about finished with this first bit. I'm just going to breeze food through these because we covered a lot of adverts and a lot of prices and stuff, so. Ah, here we go, 486DX, shipping very soon. <laughs> oh man. The world's first multi-purpose emulator, Emu Plant. Well, guaranteed compatibility is your favorite bias. Uh, the 486MMU FPU architecture emulated at the hardware level, giving you 100% functionality. Uh, it's a hardware device that is designed to allow you to emulate virtually any computer using the Amiga. A simple software driver and ROMs from a computer emulation, all that's required. So, are these things? I don't know if this was one of them, but I would love to get one of these. It's a an add-on card that you stuck in and on it was actually like a real 486 cpu some video uh, display modules and then it, it's like a compatibility layer in software and this card will actually act like a computer for pass through to the hard drive and floppy drive etc these things were absolutely amazing and of course if you already had an amiga it would have been cheaper to buy one of these and to get like a pc up to 16 colors you know, and this the cord four different versions of emu plant is available ranging from $279 to $399 emulation okay emu plant comes with macintosh emulation or at six sold separately or directly you now that is awesome so you could do like mac emulation as well Apple video processing. This is their services that they put up as you. That's cool. That's the first one down. I started to think we're only going to do like two, maybe three of these, and I'm going to start flipping through a lot quicker. Okay, so let's take this one because this is 1992, and that's 21 Rand for this magazine. The all new Amiga 4000. So Amiga 4000 just got launched. New 68040 processor. So they're still selling like the 68040 all those years later. 120 megabyte hard drive. AGA chipset. Ultra high res. OS. It's 
a uh, modem. <laughs> supra quality, supra price, supra fax. It's a fax modem. Let's have a look at the, the speeds and stuff. So, 1992 V30, uh, that's sort of what you expect. Uh, it's a, like a 32k modem. $299. Uh, Biz, so that, that's probably like fax, everything included. $399. I mean, back in the day, you had one of those, you were screaming. GVP lock advert, so GVP lock has been around for a while. Now, these expansions used to be for the Amiga 5000, I think it was. Uh, let's see. Uh, GVP turbo expansion. Yada, yada, yada. It runs a 68EC 030. Running, running at 40 megahertz, so this one was screaming. Yeah, even here it says up to 10 times more faster. Drives up to 240 megabytes. Direct access to 8 megabytes of RAM. Yeah, remember how I talked about, talked about like the cards that, that came with a CPU and everything? So, MS DOS, DOS, okay. Now you can run thousands of PC compatible software packages. Use GVP Innovative's unique mini slot for a 350 Turbo, A500 HD8 uses only. Okay, so the A55. See, I've been doing this for too long. My voice is getting sore. The A500 PC286 emulation feature features. Now this isn't actually like an emulation. It has the physical CPU and things. And I want to see if I can see which one it is. But it does MS DOS, 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 it's a 16 MHz 286 basically. Uh, Hercules, CGA, EGA, VGA, VGA only mono. Simultaneous PC and Amiga application use because technically Amiga's not doing anything, it's just passing the data. Okay, 512 memory gigabytes, dedicated memory. And you can add a MASCO processor. Now I'm going to take a look at this magazine a bit closer. Oh, they, it's, it's a VSI technologies. No, IIT 286. Cool. So we also have like a hard drive card here. Yeah, we've got some more accelerators. Time tested user method uh, now shipping in 33 megahertz GeForce OPR. We, we saw the GeForce earlier. Of course, this is, you can see from the connector, this isn't for the A, Amiga 4000 or the Amiga 2000. So, here we've got an advert for some mice, and of course, you've got to have your trackball. To this day, I actually prefer trackball, um, except for when I'm getting. Here we've got a whole bunch of. Like now, I just type on copy two. <laughs> this was quite complex for a word processor back in the day. You could do graphics overlays, change the background. This was very difficult, so you could have your clipboard art, and then the text actually like scrolling past it. This was a powerful program back in the day. So we can see here, does it do... Yeah, it compares it to ProWrite. <laughs> and of, of course, they, they want you to think that it's, it's better than ProWrite. I don't know, it could be. And here we've got the announcement for the Amiga 4 file. Reviews, professional draw. So what's interesting is I thought that there was going to be way more game reviews in these. Ah, know your rights. So you've written a program. Here's what you should know about copyrights. Law, whether you intend to sell your work, make it freely distributable, or place it in public domain. 
you know, this was a discussion that was going on like since the 80s really about software. Initially, when computers started like 70s, that sort of thing, software wasn't viewed as its own unique thing. It was like free. It was the thing that made the hardware work. So there was all sorts of contention about how things are going to turn out, how copyright should be, that sort of thing. So let's check your rights. Countries that are signatures to the Bernie Copyright Treaty includes Canada and recently the US do not even require that copyright notice uh, be present for the work to be pr protected. So basically, if you don't have like a copyright notice on work, it's, it's automatically protected because of course it is. Uh, copyright extends the moment the work is created. Not all countries, however, are members of the Bernie Convention. For many years, the United States was signatory to the Universal Copy Code Convention, but no, the Bernie, okay, yeah, that's all good and such. So we've got also public domain. Public domain is when you just release your, pub, your software on the internet, no license, no nothing. You know, that's what I have to do again. Now the graphics accelerator. I'm skipping through these because I really want to find some games or something to review. Ah, uh, here we go. We, yes, here's some prices. Oh, it's the same company we did earlier that had that massive advert. There we go, Shadow of the Beast free. Look at that graphics, you know? Just, just look at this, it's beautiful. Peace free out of the shadow by Psygnosis. You know, if you saw a Psygnosis game, you knew it was going to be awesome. Okay, so let's have a look see. Yeah, got some more accelerators. What's interesting here is the price of it, it's still more or less the same range. Although, if you wanted a 33 megahertz, it would have been $2,229. Oopsie daisy. PC TV. Keep that in mind. Okay. Do I have like our modem here again? Super RAM is it's a RAM expand expander. I think that's for the A twelve hundred to be honest, over the PC MCIA sort of bus. Okay, publishing software. Deluxe Paints by Electronic Arts. A lot of uh, games was designed using Deluxe Paint. <laughs> You've got Rio 3D uh, Anti Gravity. Video Director. Video Director still, I think, is still going on if I remember correctly. I could be wrong. Here's the console, the actual system prices. Before we get to that, so hard coins, you know, slotted in, and then you've got a hard drive. Like 213 megabytes, $799. Wow. Well, here we've actually got some computer prices, but yeah, there's no prices listed for this. It's called for system price. But Amiga 600, which remember that was supposed to be the budget Amiga. Okay, Amiga 600 R drive was included. It's only a 40 megabyte one. It was $599. Or well, if you just want the Amiga 600, $399. Compact, low profile design, external PC MCI. Amiga DOS, release 2. Color composites, RF, and RGB out. No AGA though. But yes, let's just say you wanted a video editing workstation. Which is an Amiga 2000, CPU, keyboard, new tech video toaster, 2799, and that's for a 2000, that's not for a 3000. Let's 
say you wanted to subscribe to this magazine. $21. <laughs> Which in South Africa, you couldn't really subscribe to these. You had to go to CNA. Okay, entertainment, CDTV. Now here's something we didn't cover before. So the CDTV was like the CD32, but it was their equivalent to like smart TV or digital TV back in the day. And it was basically the A500 that was scaled back. So let's see if the unit itself. Professional bundle is 185. If you want a chin lock, 155. So I don't see actual CDTV itself prices on. Ah, uh, yes, top 10 things. Superfax modem. So 14.4, that was the... <laughs> that was blistering fast back then. $305. ECTV, 379. Okay, Amiga DOS, 85. Civilizations, then, you know, the only game that... Civilization, the only game that actually made it to the list. $39. Ah, here's some EA leases. Cyber Empires, Harpoons, Mega Fortress, Populous 2, Prophecy of the Shadow, Road Flash. I love those either. Okay, and let's end this video off with a bit of eye now and let's have a look at some games. So, first of all, we've got Verminate here. Now, I don't want to spoil my pickups, but this name rings a bell. Rainbird Go Green with their latest release in which the aim of the... It's difficult to read with the lights the way it is. I me not being able to go forward. Rainbirds. Rainbird Go Green with their latest release in which the aim is to rid a huge oak tree of vermin. Right on. Each bug eye bug which you destroy will improve your bank balance and enable you to visit the shop and buy better bug bashing weapons alternatively try bank or casino okay or even mob or which will improve your bank balance but some of which may ultimately damage your health if you are a little late with a repayment out soon for the amiga and of course you have to have a pointless horse racing game. I think I've also got Xenophobe. Ah, here's a nice advert. Xenophobe, exterminate the aliens. <laughs> you have to sort of twist it to read it properly. Oh man. Lords of Doom, Fallen Angel. You know, a lot of these, I never own an Amiga, so a lot of these I don't know at all. Ah, here we go. That This is what I, the sort of content I wanted here. So we've got our event, Adventure Chart. It's going to take a quick breather. So number one is two colors of magic one time and magic so i presume that's like the sequel to the first one time and magic bane of adrian maul lord of the rings now the lord of the rings adventure game was actually fairly terrible it was a text-based adventure and the top of the screen kind of like drew the scene in and but you're still allowed to use a text parser i think most of these sounds like it's text parsers parsers Heroes of the Lance, Defender of the Crown. You still get Defender of the Crown. Multiple versions, every single machine has to have a clone of it. Still exists to this day. Guild of Thieves, Zork 1, Bard's Tale 1. Absolute classics, both of those. Zork 1 and Bard's Tale 1. Absolutely phenomenal. Okay, and in times of lore. Now let's look at the top of Mega Games. So you've got Populous. It's a given. Lords of the Rising Sun, Forgotten Worlds, awesome, awesome game. Kick off, Silkworm, Micropo Soccer, Blood Money. Gunship was also good. Millennium 2.2, 2. 
Dragon Ninja, Falcon, uh, Lombard, just barely. Outrun, I'm surprised it's only 13. Apparently it's a decent port on the Amiga. Run the Gauntlet, Sword of Sedan, World Blast, Leaderboard. I don't know, this on PC was like a revolution. Run Monster Slam, Test Drive 2, another great PC game. Precision Metal, Personal Nightmare. And then it's Commodore 64 was starting to like slow down a little bit at this stage, I would presume. But we still have like a chart here, so let's push this up and up again. Yeah. Enduro Racer, that's a classic. Robocop is a classic. Postman Pat, I don't know, but 1942, absolute classic. League of Challengers, Daily Thompson's uh, Decathlon, another classic. SAS Combat, uh, Emily Huger's International Soccer, Audiogenic, Silkworm again. Army Moves, Quantlet 2, classic. Roadrunner, classic. Sort of classic. The game wasn't that good. <laughs> Arcade Fight, Football Manager, Brambo, uh, Shanghai Warriors, and the Gauntlet, Operation Wolf, Classic, and Super Cycle, and Speedball. And Ocean had, had, had like two games on the list, there are three games on the list this time around. Nice. Inner Space, pitching nine levels, just shoot them up. <laughs> You have to say multi layer paradox crawling. Don't let the Aussie blues get you now. So, this looks like it's an Australian magazine. Ah, oh, demos. So, here, ray tracing <laughs> again. Back in the Commodore um, Amiga days, you know. You don't need a GeForce RTX for this. <laughs> so there, there's some screenshots. And just look at the dithering. So you see the dithering pattern there. You know, and they expected this to actually, the scan lines would fill in all of the little dot pictures and stuff. Same with this image, you can see how they use dithering. Robocop! We've got an entire section dedicated to Robocop. Sound 80, graphics 78, playability 85, lossability 85. It's, it was a good game. Uh, guys, feel free to like pause the video and read. So you've got like a little comic going on there. Falcon Mission Disc 1. This one got 98, it's a flight simulator. Mr. Hell, oh, Red Heat. What is this? From Ocean. So this would have either been like amazing or terrible. <laughs> Mr. Heli, the helicopter. So now you got 78. But it is a C64 game. RVF. 96% you know another classic Indiana Jones on the last crusade 71 God, feel free to pause this video and, and to give that a read and let's just look at these adverts why can't we get adverts like this anymore? ocean soft why are your adverts so there's another ocean soft advert Action pack. So this included some broad STI, you know, driller. Some some good games. Of course, of because of the Azure Bond, eighty nine. Never heard of it. Another one for the sixty four. We've got some prices here. I'm just going to use a official Commodore monitor. Corner one zero eight four, two hundred twenty nine dollars. Philips CM 8833. I wonder that that sounds familiar. Okay, it's a nice 14 inch anti glare. Okay, we switch for better clarity. 
So it actually comes with leads for the Amiga C64, C128. I need to check that. Oops, I'm giving too much away. So here they didn't know like if it's a bad game, black and white graphics, sixty-seven percent. African ride raider, <laughs> a fifty-one. No. So here it, it's more like the budget stuff. It looks like. Ah, oh, New Zealand story. Firstly, let's have a look at some of these accessories. 144 for your uh, C64. It's pounds. Eight pounds fifty for uh, click joystick. Micro switches, I think. So let's see uh, Amiga 500. Mouse will cost you 250 pounds. Five blank discs. CBM 64 PSU. Is that Philips again? Here's New Zealand store. Let's look at the art in this. I dedicated a lot to this game. And it deserves it. It's a good game. It's a good platformer. Eighty-eight percent, yeah. I can see that. Oh, actually it's it's aged better than Robocopter. Tom and Jerry. <laughs> Shameless cash grab. 26%. Let's see if there's like an excerpt here somewhere we can pull. Without the decent sound and graphics of the Amiga, the C64 was very little to recognize it. They don't even do a dance when you pick the radio on. The Swiss. Oh man. I did not like them cheaping out. Barbarian 2, 86. Looks like a good game. Uh, moving on. Uh, Dead for a magazine. Jaws on the 64. Or 39%. Yeah. <laughs> not far off. Colts, what's on this side? Strategic Plus Software. Hmm. Crazy game, you can get a extra stuffy drive. Cult got 80%, that's nice. Waterloo. Oops. We are starting to to end up with not enough time on our side. Daytal! Now who remembers Daytal? Daytal used to add like all these peripherals and stuff. So like a reset cartridge. It just adds like reset to your system. Um, later on they did like memory hacking for other systems and that sort of stuff. Uh, like MIDI 64. Full MIDI 64 interface for your Commodore 64. Now that's cool. Deep scan burst number. Yeah that's when I started with the memory sort of stuff. Turbo ROM is a smart card. Keep around that. These are the budget titles, of course. Into the valley. Know if it's going to be readable on video. Ah, it looks like it's all. You guys can pause. More data tile products. Helpline? 
Oh, I remember you got stuck in a game, no internet, you, there's a helpline you can call. And of course, this is probably one that you used to like send a letter to the editor and they'll help you. Space area and the Sentinel. Space area was difficult, man. So here you actually poked like RAM addresses and stuff for cheats. <laughs> How to use the outline, here we go. It's easy to send a letter uh, marking your envelope with the appropriate code number. If you're sending a response post, you let it uh, get play to win outline. See you, uh, yada, 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 yada. So in each letter, publish will get a free piece of software. A month's winner will be getting a copy of you is called Forgotten Worlds on the Omega. Nice. There's some pokes. There we are once again. Yeah, this was like cheats. You know how action replay and game genie work? Pokes basically does the same thing. Poke a bit of RAM, do some alterations, and, and then you, you, you get extra things. Ah, oh, Thunderbird birds. And this is play to win, so it's like a map of how things look. You know, statue guide sort of. That you played in parts. Play to the win for Populous. Action replay. Here's an action replay. From data. I'm so, that, oh, this is what I was looking for um, on the actual. On the, the advert. I didn't see it. First action replay. This could do a lot of debugging. Uh, I want for the money and then they, they talk about uh, jukeboxes. boxes. arcade reviews. Willow got like eighty-eight percent bonus. Here we go, Mega Five Hundred. This is a Mega Five Hundred with the video adapter. It's worth two hundred fifty pounds, three hundred ninety-nine pounds. Plus a disk drive, 449. Plus a monitor, 649. You see how it, it like gets expensive fast? Check out these gate sticks now. That's always interesting. So you can see how cheap our gate sticks actually got, because the market was competitive. So you've got lots of products, it's going to go cheaper, you know. Yeah, that's that's what I would have grabbed. But uh, that's just me. Must have micro switches. Let me stop. Yeah, well, I think that's going to be it for this this episode. Um, I know my face wasn't in here at all or anything like that, but. I think that's for the better and yeah let me know if you guys want to do more of these I'd, ideally i want more gaming orientated ones um the first two i grabbed wasn't at all like i can see like quite a few of these are game orientated Ooh, look, look at all this hardware but yeah i thought we could do something a little bit different and see how it goes and if you guys like this, let me know and we might do another one at some point. Fortunately, a lot of the magazines in the front kind of fall off. Yeah, so if you like my videos, please consider subscribing. And uh, yeah, until next time, guys. Cheers. And for those of you who made it to the end of the video, here's a small little teaser 
of what you can expect in the next pickups. All of this came from a really gracious and wonderful friend. In fact, uh, there was two friends, because there's two different pickups here. But expect this to be in the next pickups video, and the next one is going to be quite special in comparison.